everyone. So today Ivy and I are going to be doing some stop whistle exercises using our place board. Now I haven't done any place board work with her for a while so I'm keep my fingers crossed that she's remembered but what I want to look at today is exercises that will help us to improve our stop at distance just because I've realized that we've done a lot of stop work in close proximity when she's hunting but not a lot recently while she's been at distance from me and so I think if I tried to stop her while she was quite a long way away we might not get success so just going to put in some exercises I'll be honest I've not thought through this training session particularly well in my head yet so it might be a bit haphazard but let's give it a go and see how we get on now because it's been a little while since we've done any place board training with Ivy, I started the session by just reminding her that she gets good stuff when she gets on the board and when she stays on the board. So I'm just reinforcing her for making the decision to go on the board and then also reinforcing her for staying on the board. Now. The place board is an essential piece of this training session so you need to have some place board foundations in order to progress through the exercises that we're going to work on today and if you haven't used a place board before i have got a video on how to introduce the place board to a dog which i will link in the description below for you if you want to go and check that out now the criteria that I'm looking for with my place board training is that she remains on the board. So you'll notice here that she's kind of twizzling round with me. Um, sometimes she stands up, sometimes she sits down. I'm not fussed about any of that as long as she is remaining with all of her four paws on that board, which she is. And she showed me in this little introduction session that she had remembered all of her place board work and so we were able to start progressing on. So to start with, I'm just using my place cue to get her targeting the board. And you can see she did that with loads of enthusiasm, which is really, really nice. Now with Ivy's place training, because I started out doing lots of work by rewarding her for making the choice on her own to go on the board, I also make a conscious effort to reinforce her for staying with me when I've asked her to. So she stayed with me and she only goes when I give her that place cue, she runs to the board and as soon as she gets on I'm able to click, which is my marker to tell her, well done, you got that right, that's the behaviour I was looking for. And then because I've built so much value on her staying on that place board, it means I'm then able to walk back to her to then deliver the reinforcement on the board, which I think is really important when you're teaching a stop whistle, particularly when you're using positive reinforcement based methods because you want to ensure that the dog is always being reinforced out there away from you. If the dog starts to be rewarded by your side or for coming in towards you, then you're going to find that you start to encourage those sort of creeping behaviours or a dog that doesn't stop, they just turn around and recall back to you. So that's why I decided to use a place board for this session because I think it's a really, really useful tool. Now this kind of exercise setup is something that I've picked up from Jane Arden when I was part of her Wagga Wiffins Canine College community. Now I must confess that was a little while ago and so I may not be doing these exercises to the T of how Jane would teach them um, but the concept has definitely stemmed from there. So I will include a link to her um, bits and pieces in the description below if you're interested in checking her out. She has loads and loads of great resources so definitely worth a look. Um, but ultimately what I'm doing in this first part of the session is making sure that Ivy's place cue is strong and I'm gradually adding more distance so I'm cueing her to get on the board from further and further away because this is going to be the foundation behaviour that we're going to lay out our stop whistle onto. And so this is the last repetition we've done at this stage getting her to target the board from a distance as you can see she's running on super enthusiastically so it's nice to see that she's remembered all of our previous place board training and now we're in a position that we can start to layer in the stop whistle now because i'm adding in another layer by introducing the stop whistle i'm going to bring my distance back in a little bit and I'm going to cue the same place behaviour, but just as she hits the board, I'm going to blow my stop whistle. She is going to stop on the board because that's what she's been doing previously. And then I'm going to click to mark that and go in and reward. And essentially, what I'm doing here is pairing the stop whistle with that place behaviour. So 
what this is helping to do is to create the picture in her mind that mum blows a stop whistle when I'm at distance, I stop, turn around and face her, and then I get rewarded for that. So this is just gonna help reinforce the point that the stop whistle means stop wherever you are, whether you're close to me hunting or whether you're running away from me on a run out. And by using the place board, which is a nice reliable behavior that we've already got, we're gonna be doing this in what should hopefully be as error-free a way as possible. And between each repetition, I'm then healing her back and I'm counting the number of steps I'm doing as I'm healing her. And we're adding five steps for every repetition, which means we're gradually increasing the distance that she's stopping from me. Um, but doing it in such a way that she's not really noticing it because it is in nice small increments. So then we finish this stage of the session by doing one more repetition and we've now built ourselves up to about 40 yards away, which is a nice distance, particularly for a spaniel, um, to be stopping. Obviously, we will want to build a bit more onto this and if you're doing retriever style training, then you'll probably want to build a lot more onto this. But hopefully it shows you how you can gradually start to increase your stop at distance. So she did that really, really nicely. So then I waddle back over to her, reward her in position for that stop. And then I release her and she has a little bit of a brain break before we move on to the final part of our session, which was doing one repetition of trying to put the stop at distance into a more real life setting. So what I'm going to do is to put the place board away and then I'm going to take Ivy out and line her up like I would if she was going for a blind retrieve. Then on her run out, I'm going to blow my stop whistle and she does a beautiful stop at what's probably about 30, 35 yards away from me. And then this is where you can see the difference with not having the place board because as soon as I clicked, she pinged out towards me. and. That was predominantly due to handler error in terms of my timing. I should have clicked and as I clicked, immediately lobbed my tennis ball out for her so that she could get reinforced out there where she was. Um, so that was my fault, not hers, but she still stopped beautifully, so was fully deserving of that reward. And then to finish off, we just did one simple clean retrieve without any stop whistles being blown. So I'm also part of the Hot Mess Handler course that's going on at the moment and I'll include a link to that in the description below. Um, and we had a session where Emily Wickham was the featured expert and she is a fabulous trainer. I really, really rate her. So again, I'll include a link to her website, Scurries in the comments below and if anyone's looking for a dog trainer in the kind of high Wickham area I would highly recommend that you check her out but we were discussing training the stop whistle on how it's important not to overdo it in these sorts of setups where your dog's retrieving and they're on task because you can start to get a dog that gets a bit sticky because they're anticipating that the stop's going to come and so they stop themselves. It's just something to bear in mind Stopping your dog on the retrieve can look very fancy and you get quite reinforced as a handler when you get success with that, but be conscious not to do too many repetitions. And if your dog does start to get sticky, just stop with your stop whistle work for a little while in that context. But that's why I love this place board session because all I'm doing is actually reinforcing my place cue and it's not having a detrimental impact on any of her other behaviours. So I hope you found that interesting. As always, if you have any tips, any advice or any questions, please feel free to pop them in the comments below. And thanks for watching.